Hello, guys. Hello, hello, Sabi Nation. I'm excited to be here today with you. It has been an amazing time. It has been an amazing time since yesterday when we started. We've had series of interesting and, and engaging facilities. You guys have been amazing. You have stayed through with us from the beginning to this very point in time. Yes, my name is Andre Binoweka. I'm the founder of Before Africa. And today I'll be moderating this session and I have someone really fascinating today in the studio with me. So leave in the comment section, how has it been since day one? How has it been since day one? What notes have you taken from this place? Um, at Skill Factory Africa, we are really excited about what we are doing. And we are ensuring that young people, we are ensuring that you have the tools that you need to thrive in today's workspace. Yes, 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 yes. Sabi Gang, let me hear you say something in the comment. Let me see you type something in the comment section. Right. So quickly, I'm going to introduce, quickly, I'm going to introduce our guest. I'm going to introduce our trainer who is going to come on board and is going to, as usual, like we've seen in all the session, he's going to give his all, he's going to give his all in ensuring that we are equipped with what we need to thrive in today's workspace. Yes, 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 yes. I'm seeing you guys. Gambia, Ugechi, Sofia, Sabicious community. Yes, Augustine. Yes, I'm seeing you there. We Sabi. Now we they run out. <laughs> it has been engaging, guys. You guys are awesome. Do well to follow us on social media. Street Africa, do well to follow us. Do well to tell your friend, to tell your friend, tell your friend to sign up and join the Sabi gang. Yes, yes, we are ready. We are ready. So quickly, I just dive into the bio of our facilitator. So we know who is coming on board. We know what to expect. And then we put in all that we need to put in to ensure that we sap, to ensure that we take all that we need to take to make sure that we are creating a sustainable impact in the society. Yes. So our facilitator for today is... Musa, Musa, and he's going to be taking us on um, how to write business plans and proposals. How to business plans and proposals, guys. Yes, you need this. You need to understand um, how to craft your ideas and put it in such a way that it attracts the people who has who have the resources that you need to thrive. Right, the people who have the resources to thrive. So we are going to do this again, like Ashiru Maki had saying we are going to do this again we did it yesterday we had fun we had fun so do well to you know all that you've learned post it on all the social media platform and relevant hashtags yes so quickly to the bio of our facilitator musa musa so musa with a degree in economics and a master's in finance and investment has over the course of his experience worked with two banks which is fcmb and stambic ibtc he has led entrepreneurship at a federal university which is the federal university of technology and currently he's working with the sales and marketing division of total nigerian psc ladies and gentlemen Ladies and gentlemen, Sabi Nation, let's make welcome our facilitator. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Let's make sure that our facilitator is well received. Guys, let's come Hello, there. Let's guys. put it in the comment section. Awesome, Lisa. Awesome to have you. Same here, Andrew. I can see the energy from you and from your participants it's incredible yeah yeah we are really excited to have you know it's not every day you find it's not every day you find people who are willing to give their all to ensure that you know the young ones coming after them have the tools to thrive sir we are really excited to be doing this with you um it's my pleasure to be here actually it's my pleasure awesome thank you very much sir so quick you to handle i'll leave you to handle the session to give us the bomb, to drop it, to drop it as we need to know it so that we can begin to cause impact in society. Thank you very much. You have the stage, sir. So thank you very much, Andrew, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm excited to be here. I can see your comments coming in. It's quite interesting. 
I can see Ajiboye Olusola, Miriam Adeboye. I can see Deborah Ibokuluwa. It's quite interesting. And I think this is going to be very, very engaging because I can see your comments. I can see um, someone says he's ready to learn. I'm ready to share as well. So hopefully this is going to be an interesting and interactive section. Hope I had wished to hear your voice, but from the comments I'm seeing here, I can see that you guys are going to make this very engaging and very interactive, which is quite okay. So, let me set the ground rules. I'm going to be sharing a presentation with you guys. So I'm going to be sharing it. I'll be asking you whether you can see my screen because it's very important that the screen is very clear so that you can understand what I'm presenting. And afterwards, the presentation will be shared with you guys so that you can read it on your own. So I'm going to try that now in the comment section, you can make comment and tell me if you can see my screen and if it's clear enough. I'm just going to do that now. So can you see my screen? Let me just go back to the comment section and see what your comments are. So can you see my screen? That's good. I can see Said telling me, uh, Sesede Esther, I hope I pronounced the name correctly, telling me that she can see the screen. So I'll assume everyone also can see. Thank you, Javon. I can see you can also see the screen. Justice, that's good. I'm impressed. So. I think we're good to go. So the business plan, many of you are entrepreneurs in your own, uh, in your own right. You are currently one way or the other doing something. Some people are entrepreneurs even before they actually leave school. While you were at school, you might have had some business going on by the side, which is very good, which I encourage everybody to do. Because in the economy we are in right now, it's very, very vital. It's very, very vital. I can't overemphasize that, that you should have a mindset, an entrepreneurial mindset. Most of the billionaires you hear these days or the richest people in the world are all entrepreneurs. Nobody is working at a corporation, rather they own the corporations. And it might interest you to know that they all did not start that big. They started just like from where most of you are now, running that small business by the side while you were in college or what you were doing by the side while you were doing your youth service if you're in Nigeria, or what you are currently doing now, waiting for a paid employment or what some people call a government employment. Well, let me tell you, what you are currently doing now is actually more and very, very useful to you than actually going into government employment. I have this um, theory I normally share with young people. Once you graduate, your mentality should be actually starting something. Because when you start something, it gives you that power. You are actually creating value. And I don't know about you, I like do it your stuff things. So when I have the feeling that I'm actually creating something and I'm inviting people to join me who might be colleagues or who I, might be people I employ, this actually creates satisfaction. Satisfaction you can't get working at a company or working for someone. I'm not saying you shouldn't work for a corporation or a company if you have the opportunity, but it's the, the best thing you can do for yourself is to start. And this is the time for you to start. Trust me. You will start, you will fall. You will start, you will fail. But that is the idea. I've seen many people whom after retirement, they have been paid millions of naira and that's when they start thinking 
what do I do with this million? What business do I start? At maybe 50 or 60 years old, it's already past time. There's no business you can start then. Because business, the very nature of ventures, going into ventures, is that you start and fail, you start and fail. And at the age of 50, 60, I'm sorry, but you've passed the level of trial and error. You should be enjoying your success at that time. So what I advise is now, don't be deterred. You might start, there might be false starts, they, you might have some challenges, you might have obstacles, but guess what? Those are the things that would help you know what not to do. If you do a business in a particular way and it fails, you are sure that if you're going to start a new venture, you are not going that way, you are going another way. So no matter the situation, success or failure, it is a win-win for you if you are in a venture of yourself. And trust me, if you invest 10 years of your life going into venture, trust me, by the time you are 10 to 15 years old in that venture, you would have been very successful. The problem with ventures is that once we fail one, two, three, most people think, man, I think going into business is not for me. But trust me, failure is actually part of it. So never give up. I can't re-emphasize this before we go into the business plan. Never give up. Never give up. It's very, very important. And try to move from that procrastinating stage. I know many of you have ideas in their head, but some might have not practicalized them yet. So it is very, very important. Start. Do it. Because most of the time, it's that fear of failure that stops people. Somebody has an idea of building a floating restaurant, but he's afraid he might fail. Somebody has an idea of setting up, like I was discussing with a young chap a couple of weeks ago, and he told me this pandemic has created opportunity for him, and he's thinking of actually starting a kind of delivery business in his state. He saw the opportunity that he's in, he's in Nigeria. He saw the opportunity that in his state, this kind of delivery guys do not exist. I've seen them in Abuja, I've seen them in Lagos, but where he is, they don't have it. So he was thinking and thinking and overthinking it. Before you knew it, just uh, two days ago, I saw an ad on Facebook by somebody from his state starting that same business. So I sent it to him and I said, you overthought this. Somebody has already moved into it, but it's still not bad because the market is very big. So just start. Don't think you have to create, make it perfect in your mind before you start it. If you are thinking of starting a, if you are a lady and you are very, you are a very good, maybe programmer, you can set up online programming teaching for kids or a boot camp for your friends. Start something. From there, ideas come. Ideas are not complete at the initial stage. It is when you start it, that's when you st start building on them. So the key word here is don't be afraid of failure and just do it. If you've gone away with nothing, go away with these two things. Don't be afraid of failure and just do it. So in that just do it spirit, I'll be taking a particular section of that, which will help you if you've decided you have an idea and you want to just do it without fearing failure, then you're going to need this tool, which I'm going to be talking about. Um, let me, and the way I'm going to structure this lecture is, I'll be going back and forth to read your comments so that I can see if there are questions and I'll go through them and answer them. After we take one, two, three slides, or we take a, uh, concept and we finish it, I'll go through your question and see it. So I can see somebody said he's late or she's late. Don't worry. You haven't missed anything. And the way this course is structured, no matter where you join, you are still going to understand and gain a lot from it. So the business plan, how I wish I could hear your voice and hear what your ideas of business plan is. Because um, I remember while I was a lecturer, back in the universities then, I was teaching entrepreneurship. So part of the ways I enjoyed teaching was, I love listening to people because you might not know it, whatever concept that is being taught to you, you have an idea of it. It's just that you couldn't connect the dots. 
So, and the best way to learn is by experience. When you experience something, you hardly forget it. So, I might ask you, what is a business plan? You might say, well, I've never heard of it, or I've heard of it, but I don't know how it's made. And if I ask you, has somebody asked you before, could you lend me 500,000 Naira? Or maybe if you're a youth copper, could you lend me your next Alawi, please? I have something to do with it. Now, I don't know about you, but the first thing that will come to my mind if I were that youth copper that has the money to lend out, I'll say, what do you want to do with it? Or even if I don't ask, that's what I'll be thinking in my mind. So that thought you are having that, what are you going to do with it? You are actually asking him, what's your plan with my money I'm going to give you? Because I'm not really interested in your venture. I'm really interested in my money and the gains I might get from my money. So basically, that's what business plan is all about. Whenever you want to start a business and you're telling a friend, mm, I'm thinking of starting an online class tutorial for cooking. I'm very good. I'm a very good cook and I want to start cooking. But the problem is I don't have a laptop. Can I get the money fr from you to buy a laptop? My thought will be, okay, so you buy a laptop. Will you earn money from this thing you want to do? And when are you paying me back? Invariably, I'm asking you, what's your plan? So basically, all of you, everybody, that's how human beings think. When you want to part with something very valuable with you, your thought is, what are you getting back in return? That's the idea of trade. That's the idea of financial services. What are you getting back in return? And that's what the question, as an entrepreneur, you are going to be faced with all the time. What is your plan? And that's why business plan in whatever format it is, be it a formal document or be it a pitch. You guys will be having a class on pitch, which is also very important. So please, if you are in this class, make sure you are part of the next class, which is going to teach you about pitching your idea in two minutes or less. You might be in an elevator and you just enter an elevator and Dangote is standing next to you. And he's going to the fifth floor and it's going to take you maybe... 30 seconds to get to the fifth floor for him to get out. The idea is for you to sell an idea to him, to make him interested, to stimulate his mind and want to talk to you more in that 30 seconds you are in an elevator with him. So that's the idea of a pitch. And that's what you are going to be learning after this class. So if you are in this class, make sure you are in the next class to learn about. If you have a business plan or if you, you've learned how to prepare a business plan, you should be able to pitch it in one minute or less so that when you sell the idea to someone, the person is willing to say, okay, that's a good idea. Can I see your business plan? Let me go through it in more detail. So business plan is actually very, very important. So I'm going to go through your comments now and see if anybody has a question before we go into the business plan proper. I can see Chabaka saying she's actively listening. That's good. I'm actively also engaged with your energy. Actually, I'm deriving energy from the energy I can see in the comment section. Yeah, justice elevator pitch. That's true. That's what I just spoke about. Yeah. I can't miss this for gold. Trust me, this is gold. And the gold is actually in you, Taiwo. So trust me, this is how you bring out the inner gold in you. Don't think the gold is somewhere you have to go and get it. You are the gold and you have it in you. So I wish you the best, Taiwo. John says, so I guess business plan is key for any entrepreneur. Yeah, that's true. It's very key in whatever format, be it a formal document, be it, we shall go through it and you shall see. But having a plan is key. That's true, John. I agree with you. Mm, Uzo Amaka, business plan is a roadmap for any business. That's true. So like I said, you all have the idea. So it's just to share the ideas or harness our experiences and learn from it. So that's good. I'm really, really impressed from the comment I'm seeing here. I can see most of you have an idea of what business plan is. And to be sincere, the way the economy is structured now, if you've been following the news, the pandemic has created a new dynamic in the economy that if you have a work doing now, Trust me, it would be a lie if you are not fearful for the security of your job. And some people have already been laid off. If you have been following the news, you will hear that 
big major corporations like British Airlines, Lufthansa, and many more are laying off staff in thousands, in tens of thousands across the world. So no job is secured now because the essence of every business is to make money. And if I'm not making money, why am I incurring overhead costs? So that's the essence why people are laying off. And the only secure job now is being an entrepreneur because you own your business. You're not going to lay yourself off. The idea is even if you're experiencing challenge, is for you to adjust, adapt, and re-strategize and move your business forward. So as an entrepreneur, you have no fear. So that's why it's very key as youths to have that mindset that being an entrepreneur is key. Even if you're going to pursue a paid employment, please and please and please, I beg of you, always have something, an idea, a business of your own running so that it might be a side kick at the start. But as the business develops, I've seen many people who have side businesses and have very lucrative paid job. But as their businesses grow, they notice that the side kick has become the major kick. And they would have to resign from their paid employment to focus on their business because it has grown and it needs more attention. So it's a very good idea to always have something doing. And like I said, never be afraid of failure and just do it. Let that be in your mind. I've spoken to many young people, some of them, I can see their comments here, and most of them have ideas, but they haven't started it. So just do it. Don't be afraid of failure. Just do it. That's a key thing I want to pass across, even if I don't pass anything across today. I can see somebody's, uh, oh, I have a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, um, Ogunbode said he has a lot of business ideas. How do I know which one to establish? Now, an idea, what I'll tell you about business ideas is ideas and opportunity. Although this is not the part of it, but I'm just going to answer that question before we move on. An idea and opportunity goes hand in hand. When you have an idea and there's no need for that product, the idea fails. So timing is also key when you have an idea. So what I'll advise that young lad that has many ideas is evaluate your ideas. See, are there real needs for it? For instance, if I have an idea that I want to create jet boosters for flying cars, it's a very good idea. It's technically sound, but they are not flying cars yet in the world. So... The idea is a bit ahead of its time. It's bound to fail. It doesn't mean it won't succeed in future, but for now, it's going to fail. And also ideas that are behind their time, meaning like my friend that I spoke about who wanted to start a delivery business but was procrastinating and somebody took over the market. If the market was small and that person could, the initial first mover could monopolize the market, then his idea has failed because he procrastinated too much. So the key is to evaluate that there's the opportunity and moving. Make sure your idea goes hand in hand with the opportunity. So if you have three ideas, evaluate them and see what is the, this idea one, is there a need for it now? Idea two, is there a need for it now? Idea three, same thing. Which one is a more pressing need? From there, you can build and the business plan is going to help you to build on how successful the idea is. Okay, I can see Yusuf wants to go straight to the topic. We're going to do that. Yusuf, Sila, thank you for bringing us back. Um, I can, some lads are really interested in idea, but that's not our spare to speak about today. So business plan. The first thing I would ask you is who are your audience when you have a business plan? Now, Ideally, your audience are people who would invest in your business. Those are your audience. Or those you want to sell the idea to. So now there are different kinds of audience. It might be a bank. It might be a venture capital. It might be friends. It might be family. So depending on who the business plan is meant for, the structure varies. 
For instance, I'm going to uh, explain the main sections of a business plan. Now, they are not exhaustive, but your business plan must contain these sections that we have. You might add to it, you might modify it, but these sections are very key. Now, if you are selling an idea to a, a family member, it's going to be different from the way you sell it to a bank manager. A bank manager will be interested in your financials. A friend might be just willing to help you and maybe be more interested in the brilliance or the stimulation he gets from going into that venture with you. So different people have different reasons why they want to see your business plan. So you have to first and foremost understand who your audience are. Now, but one thing they won't tell you, and from my experience, is that the first audience is yourself. It is very, very key to understand that there's a saying that if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So actually, although the business plan is meant for investors, but it's also very key for you. So that's why it keeps you on track. So it tells you what the idea which you developed was and then makes you ensure you meet those milestones you set on in your business plan. So even if you have a money to invest, you don't need venture from outside or you don't need finances from outside. It is very good practice to have a business plan for yourself. Try to have an overview of your market and understand the dynamics. And then why I also insist the business plan is meant for you is that because if a business plan isn't believable to yourself, it's not believable to an outsider. So if you yourself prepare a business plan and you feel, man, this is too fancy for me, I don't think this is going to sell, then you know that is not a very good business plan. So the first key thing in a business plan is you yourself need to believe it. Believe in that plan. And if you believe in it, the way you're going to sell it to an outsider, there will be that enthusiasm and they'll feel that energy from you. And they are also going to buy into it and invest in your business. But key is that you need to believe in yourself. So it's very key. And you need to understand that. So I hope you can still see my presentation. Let me just go to the comment section because sometimes there are technical problems. Okay. I, yeah, you guys can still see it. I can see some comments and saying that they can still see it. So the... Number one, understand your audience and you should know that you should be the first person you are selling the idea to. You are selling it to yourself and believe it. So like I've forgotten the young guy that had various ideas. If you want to prepare a business plan for those ideas, make sure you believe, evaluate, have a mental evaluation of those business ideas you have and see, do you believe, do you really believe they are viable? Or which one is the most viable one and requires my energy for now, which I'll focus on. Because as an entrepreneur, one thing I want you to understand is that entrepreneurs are serial in nature. What that means is that when you're an entrepreneur, you don't start a business and end it. One business throughout your life. You are a serial entrepreneur. You start one, it fails. You move to the next one, it fails. You move to the next one, it fails. That's the idea of don't be scared of failure. Or you start one, it succeeds. You start another one, it succeeds. You start another one, it succeeds. You sell the first one you started, make more money, invest in the new one you are doing. So as an entrepreneur, you are serial in nature. You are a serial entrepreneur. You are developing many. So even if you have many ideas, it's not a bad thing. Evaluate them, arrange them in order of priority. Start one, focus your energy on that. If that succeeds or if it fails, move to the next one. So it's actually a good thing for you to have various ideas now. The young guy that asked me that question. So it's very key that you always just start it. So after defining your audience, what is a business plan? Now, I might ask you that question, what the business plan is. And like I said, a plan basically, just like I told you, is understanding what you are doing with the money and then what value is going to be derived from the money. That's the basic thing anybody who asks you for a plan is looking for. 
So, and like it's written down here, it's just like a roadmap. It identifies business opportunity, demonstrates the market for it, reports on key competitors, map out marketing strategy, operations, financial plan, and implement business solution. And one thing that is very key, it must persuade audience of the value of the business venture and its sustainability. It's a selling document. And just like I mentioned before, for it to be a selling document and for it to sell, it must sell to yourself. You must sell it to yourself. And if it's sellable and you buy it, then everybody will buy it. Because the good thing about selling a business to yourself is that even if the whole world tells you it's not possible, deep down in you, you know it's possible. And when you succeed, that's when everybody will come around and say, wow, that was a great effort from you. So it's very key to sell to yourself before you sell to an outsider. So the business plan, whatever it is, you need to sell it to yourself. Okay, I can see some comments complaining about network. I hope it's not from my end. You can still hear me loud and clear, right? Okay, somebody is asking if I could zoom it a bit. Okay, I'm going to try to do that. I hope this is okay. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, it's okay. So, why is the business plan needed? Why do you need a plan? Well, if it's the idea, I can say 99% of you have an idea but the percentage of those that have a plan might not be up to that 99%. So according to Mason and Stack, these are authors. They wrote an article in an entrepreneurial journal. They said the business plan is the first contact with investors. Now, this is typical entrepreneurial scholar speaking. The business plan is your first contact with investors. Needed to attract investment, demonstrate business is well thought out, convince investors of plans and growth likelihood of achievement. Now, these are all very, very well laid out English. But the bottom line is that, just like I gave you an example, if someone comes to you for a loan, the first question is, what do you want to do with it? You're asking the person for a plan. And you're not really interested, although you might be interested in the success of the person, but what matters to you most is the success or the safety of your money you are giving to that person. You don't want him to take the money and go and gamble with it. Anyone that comes to you and says, I need money, and he tells you, I want to go and gamble, you are definitely not giving him the money, except you are willing to give it out for free. Because gamble is a 50-50 chance of succeeding. So... You need a plan. Whenever you ask people what they are using the money for, that's a plan. And that's basically what Stack is talking about. The business plan is the first contact with investors, with borrowers, with lenders, whatever you call them. It's very, very key. I can see Global War TV is still asking for me to zoom it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to try to do that now. And let's see how that works out. Or let me take it to presentation mode. How about this one? The disadvantage of this is that I can't see your comments. So I might have to exit intermittently just to read your comments. So is this okay? Now let me exit just to read your comments. If it's okay like this, then I'll come back to it and we'll continue in this format. Okay, 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 I can see that's better. So I'm going to use a presentation mode and then we'll continue with that. So just like I mentioned, um, Stack said the business plan is the first contact with investors. Now I'm giving you all this background so that you understand the importance of a business plan. 
We are going to delve into the business plan proper very soon, but it's very important to understand that business plan is very key. And business plan is not a foreign thing. These are things that are in it, in you. You know that you need a plan. You are thinking, okay, I have 500 or 30,000 Naira, my first allowance from NYC. Um, should I spend it or should I invest it? You're already thinking of what to do with it. You are planning. And that's the whole basis of a business plan. More pragmatically, just try raising finance for your business without a plan and you will re realize how essential it is. I remember while I was in the marketing um, division of First City Monument Bank and with Stambic IBTC, you see a lot of people come to you applying for loans at the bank. I used to process some loans myself. But one of the key things we look at is what's your plan? What are you investing in? especially if you are providing no collateral for that loan. Is that plan sustainable? So it's very important. And recently, the CBN, Smedan, Bank of Industry are giving out loan. I just read in the news that the federal government just approved a fund for youths where loans will be given out, dispersed to youths. Be rest assured that one of the criteria that will be required for accessing those funds is going to be a business plan. So it's very, very key. If you go to Smedan to collect loan, you definitely be request, required to bring a business plan. In fact, a whole economy has been developed on this business plan. I, I know people who write business plan for a living. People who want to get loan, go to them, pay them, share the idea, idea they have with them, and then they develop it into a business plan. That's to show you how important it is. So business plan is very key. And if you can develop yours, it's even better because you can sell it better, especially if you're going to be giving a pitch on your plan to potential investors. So bank managers, venture capitalists, investors, business angels, these are all people who invest in businesses. So, and they require some sort of plan some sort of assurance that their money is safe. And the only way you can give that to them is having a concise business plan. Now, what do investors look for in a business plan? They want to know your team, you and who is starting a business. I have a intern who did an intern with me uh, re recently. Um, the guy started a perfume business. He was a bio, he studied biochemistry in university. So he just finished his NYSC with us. So he told me he's starting a perfume line. So because that's his specialty, a biochemist. And he was discussing funding with me. And part of the question he was telling me was that he requires funds to scale up his operation. And naturally, the first thing I asked him was that, okay, who you and who and who are in this venture? I was asking him of his team. And he shared with me that his friends from the university are also interested and they are kind of doing the business together, about five of them. And when he gave me the profile of the team, I was quite impressed. So these are things investors will be looking for. If you are going into a particular business, you have to have team who are experts in that field, or at least you should be willing to bring in people who are experts, be it immediately or in the future. Those are the kind of things investors will be looking for in the business plan. So another thing again is a clear product. It is very essential to have a clear product. Product or services, it might be a service, not necessarily a product. So it's very important to have something clear. And like I explained earlier, when you have a product, you should also consider the timing to market. It's very key because those are things investors are going to be looking at. If I'm going to do this, is there a need for it? Is there a particular need for it? You just don't do what you want. You do what the market, what the environment dictates. For instance, recently, I've, I've seen some entrepreneurs sprung up in delivery service. You'll notice that the amount of delivery agents or delivery businesses have increased because recently, because of the lockdown, people rarely go out anymore. 
But then people need to get stuff from the grocery shops or from the markets. So, and those that are not willing to take the risk of going out because of the pandemic will actually engage the services of these delivery companies that are springing up all over the place. And they are making a kill out of it now because people hardly go to the market these days. Some still go, but there are people who are a bit conservative and they require this, the services of these people. So there is a clear need for it. That's why these entrepreneurs responded by creating a service that is tailored to solving that need. So it's very key. Make sure you evaluate your product and or your services you are willing to provide. Is there a clear need for it? If you can answer that question and if it's yes, you can proceed. Also, the investor or you yourself to convince yourself, you have to make sure that there's a market for the product. This one goes hand in hand with the second point because if there's a need for it, there's a market for it. Real unmet need, that's what I put in brackets. There's a, it might also be met, like I advised my entrepreneur friend who wanted to start the same business in the States, somewhere in Nigeria. There's already somebody in the market, but the market is very big. And with the pandemic not easing, more people will actually require the services of this kind of delivery agent. So there's actually more needs for delivery agents across the country. You might decide to go about yours in a niche or a unique way that will make your business plan more sellable and more likable to your investors. Because they, even if there are other competitors, your approach to solving that problem is very niche. So it's very key. Your capability also matters. And capability here, like I told you about the intern that just finished with me, he is a biochemist. He's going into a perfume business, which makes a lot of sense because it all has to do with chemicals and adding this, a base to that, and coming up with different fragrances. So at least you know he's capable. But even if you are not capable, make sure you as the idea proponent who doesn't have maybe you are a business management graduate and you want to do go into some kind of online or a computer software business or an application make sure you have an app developer in your team even though you don't have the experience of developing an app or maybe a computer software the app developer or the computer engineer can do that so it's very key to have the capability in the team you gather in that in your business plan. Also, there should be growth potentials for the business. Now, the growth potential here is to make sure that, okay, this may need, hope it's not one off. Hope after the lockdown, there will be no need for delivery agents. What's your plan in that case? So it's very key to think about the future also. The business, is it growing or do you plan to diversify to kind of counter that situation, if it happens after the pandemic and there's a vaccine and everybody is going out, what happens to your delivery business? What do you diversify into? So it's very, very key. Also, cash generation. Now, this is where investors are very, very key. And we're going to be spending a lot of time on the financial aspect of the business plan. Because you, the point is, if you don't generate cash, profit is not cash. You might make profit, but it's not cash. You have to understand that, especially for those that don't have accounting backgrounds. Your business must be able to sell and collect money and have cash. You might decide to reinvest the cash in the business, pay interest to the banks, or pay the investors, or pay yourself, but it has to generate cash. If not, the business is not sustainable. sustainable. Now, a less added section of the business plan is the exit strategy. In Nigeria, most business plans I see, and from the Smedan templates and Bank of Industry templates I have, I see normally they don't require exit strategy. But it's very key for you to have an exit strategy. What do you plan to do with that business? Do you plan to maybe after it grows to a certain stage, go public, sell shares, go for an IPO, sell the assets, move into a new venture? Just have an exit strategy. Because if you don't have an exit strategy, by the time... For instance, the market situation changes. You'll be under pressure to adapt. And if you're unable to adapt, you might end up just 
selling the business at a giveaway price because you didn't have a clear exit strategy at the beginning of the business. So permit me to just go through some comments and see if there's any, okay. I have an exit strategy, yeah, I can see that. Okay, Daniel said, if you don't have the hard skill personally, have one who has it in your team. Yeah, it's very key. Profit is not cash, definitely. And I'm going to explain that because there are a lot of companies. I don't know how many of you guys have heard about Enron. It collapsed during the 2008 financial crisis. The company that same year declared billions of profits, but it declared bankruptcy because cash is not profit. And we're going to explain that further. So please, sir, does, the, does an NGO that is non-profit need business plan? Well, like I explained to you, it does need a business plan, but not necessarily for an investor. So you have to tailor a business plan of an NGO to who the audience are. If you are the only audience, you, need, you know you just need the plan to develop a milestone, how you achieve different areas or different situations as they arise in the business, the exit strategy, the market, whatever you plan to do. We are going to go through the sections of a business plan. Then you would not see for an NGO, a financial analysis part might not really be needed, except maybe you are requesting don a donation or grants from international organizations, then they might want to see your financial. But otherwise, that part might not be as important as somebody preparing the business plan to give to a bank manager to get a loan. So I can see all is good. Okay, so now that you know what investors are looking for, these are some guidelines to remember. It is very important, keep the plan respectively short. Trust me, they said recently the attention span of the normal human being is less than that of the goldfish. A goldfish have more attention span than a human being. And that's because it's even particularly true now in the age of information explosion, your phone, your laptop, the TV, your headsets, everything now is connected, the internet of everything. So there's an information explosion. You are on Twitter now before you know you're on Facebook, before you know you're on Instagram. So it is very key to keep attention. And the same thing goes with investors. They have hundreds of business plans to go through. And if you Bring a 5 kg book as a business plan. Trust me. I'll say, okay, maybe I'll go through it in the night. And that's just bye-bye to your plan. I might not go through it. Because even as a, as a bank staff, the forms are very long. But the areas we are interested in while I was in bank processing loan was basically what the idea was, the financial analysis of your plan. Those are the areas we go through and see, is it viable? Is it wishful thinking? So it is very key to keep your business plan short, but not too short. That's why I use the word respectively short. Organize, package your plan appropriately. Just like the person who was going into an NGO mentioned, you, might, you will see the section and outline of the business plan very soon. You might not need all the section. So depending on your audience, you organize and package your plan appropriately. Orient your plan towards the future just, just now. We've known that businesses are very, very dynamic. In fact, the situation are very dynamic. Some of the businesses which grew from the 2008 financial crisis that I told you were Uber, Airbnb. Uber is a ride-sharing tool. Most of you might have the app on your phone. And Airbnb is a way, is a revolutionary way where somebody came up with the idea of sharing apartments. For instance, I'm planning to travel for holidays for a week. I'll put my apartment up. Somebody may be coming into Abuja where I am now for an interview for a day. Might just say, okay, I need a day out of the one week you are traveling. He will rent the apartment for a day. So he doesn't have to tie himself down or go and collect a hotel, which are very expensive. So these are all creative ideas that developed in 2008 and the businesses became very successful. But suddenly with the pandemic, where there's no contact, social distances, these businesses are struggling. Nobody is ordering Uber anymore. Uber just announced that it will be laying thousands of staffs off. 
Airbnb is suffering because nobody is willing to put his house up anymore for anybody to come in. So you have to orient your business for the future. Anticipate different scenarios. The next part is avoid exaggeration. You might be tempted to exaggerate your success. Trust me, anybody who has experienced a venture capital or a bank manager has seen a lot of plans, so he can identify exaggeration. Keep your idea meek, simple and realistic. And if there's opportunity for growth, the venture capital will actually see it and advise you accordingly or might actually keep it selfishly and invest in you because he sees real potential more than what you see in your business. So it's better to avoid exaggeration so that you're not discarded and be realistic or pragmatic. Now, highlight critical risk, just like I told you now. If Uber had foreseen a pandemic and something that will cause people not to actually interact physically or Airbnb, they would have prepared their business plan or actually modified their business model to suit that situation by the time it comes. So it's very good to identify risk and prepare for them. Give evidence of an effective entrepreneurial team. This we mentioned earlier, it's very key. Have a team who highlights their experiences. I might go through the page where you highlight people who are in your team. What I'm looking for is not just their name and their designation, their experience is okay. He was into this venture, it failed, it succeeded. He did this venture, he did this venture. That would key give me an assurance that, oh, these guys are really, they are not people who will give up when the going goes tough. They are actually rock solid entrepreneurs. So it's very key. Identify target markets, keep plan written in third person. It's very, very important. The company expects to generate a revenue of 700,000 in the first year and a growth of 5% subsequently in the next two years. Keep it in the third person. Capture the reader's interest. You have to be creative in writing. Here you might write it the way, present. That's why some people go to people who are experts to develop business plan, give them the idea, and they might write it creatively. But it's very good you have key understanding of this so that if those that are writing it for a year of plan, you can bring them back. So now let's go into the clear outline of what the business plan requires proper. So before that, let me just go through your comments and see. Good vibes. Thank you, Titi. SME, small, medium, and yeah. SME, small, medium size entrepreneurs or enterprises, depending. Keep plan written. Yeah, I can see. Okay, there's no question so far. What's the work of an app developer in a business, please? Well, Ogechi, okay, depending on what your business is, your business might not need an app developer. But maybe if you are thinking of, okay, let's say you notice that during your NYC year, it was difficult for coppers to get accommodation and accommodation are highly priced mainly because most coppers are new to the territory they are posted to so they don't have knowledge of the market and if you are an economy the economists here will know that one of the key to a perfect market is perfect information and because you don't have perfect information you might end up paying hundred thousand for a house meanwhile the house actually costs fifty thousand because but well, because you don't know you had alternatives you might do that now you now devil from there you got an idea of developing an app specifically targeting NYSC, youth coppers, where information of different housing agents, you collect house rents from different agents, mobile agents we currently have, and put it in an app where somebody on his palm can just look through and see different options and different places. So you know that this is actually technically di driven, and you might need a software engineer who, or a web developer for a website, or an app developer if you want to go into app. In that case, you need an app developer. But if you're going into a business which requires maybe like the perfumery, which a copper told me about, he might not necessarily need an app developer. What he needs is just maybe biochemists, marketers, and whoever is needed. So it depends on your business venture that will determine who your team are. So it's very key to know what your business venture is to know the team. The key thing to know is that make sure you get the people you need. That's just all. 
if I'm going into a tailoring business, it's needless to say they must have somebody that has tailoring experience on my team. If I'm going into something that is X, I will have somebody that has X experience in my team. So depending. So thank you for that question, Ogechi. So these are briefly the sections of a business plan. Our time is fast being spent. We have this, we have only over 30 minutes left, so I'm going to go through them again. So these are the outline, executive summary. Trust me. Executive summary, in fact, although it's been considered as a part of a business plan, as far as me I'm concerned, I treat the executive summary as a document in itself. Because most venture capitalists or most bank managers just go through your executive summary. So what I advise people is make sure you write the executive summary last after you've gone through all the sections. So the executive summary should summarize the key and the highlights of your plan, if you like. So although it's the first thing on the business plan, it should be written last. That's my advice. So business description, here you would go to general firm, background industry, background goals and potential business milestones. Then you have a section for the products or services. Here you go through design, packaging, billing. These are the kind of things we should find in this section. The next section, don't worry, we'll go into details in them. This is just an overview of them. So we'll go into details in them. The next section is the marketing plan and strategy. Now, marketing plan, you are considering the target market, the consumer, competition, if there are going to be competition, your pricing, your advertising, are you going to go strictly on social media marketing or are you going, are you going to go on TV or radio marketing, depending on how you want to create awareness for your products. Operation and support. Here we want to know the quality target, the technology requirement. You want to develop an app, you have people, what technology is required to develop that app? You want to develop a perfume, do you have a lab to mix the ingredients for a perfume? What are the technology requirement for a product? This here, you specify them in this section. Management team, the experience and expertise, organizational structure, you are the owner, I, ho I own the whole stock or shares in the business, and then, also, intellectual property rights. Are you going to go for a patent copyright so that nobody copies your product or copy your services, depending on these are all separate topics on themselves. Then the key area which most investors look at, the financial plans and projection. <clears throat> Income statement, balance sheet, statement of cash flow, break-even analysis, very, very important. We'll go through that in details also. Funding needs and sources, What's your plan? Are you only sticking to bank loans? The manager might want to find out, or do you have an equity contribution? Meaning, have you started the business with your own capital? That's what it's meant by equity. You've started with your own capital and you just need a loan to augment it, or you want to get sell shares rather than selling a loan. There are advantages to all of them. Instead of getting a loan, you might decide to sell a share, which might not cost you interest. So depending on the way sources of finance you want to go through, this should be clearly stated in the financial plan. Now, for the non-financial or business-minded people in this section, don't worry. When I go them, in, when I go through them in details, I'm going to try as much as possible to relay them in a layman term as possible because these things might sound fancy: income statement, break-even analysis. They are actually things we do every day. So it's just harnessing your experience. Now, I'm going to try as much as possible to do that. So don't be scared. They are not fancy terms. Risk and opportunities. Now, risk and opportunities, you need to clearly state those things in your business. So to show that actually you understand your market and you are prepared for risk when they come and also prepare for opportunities when they come. Now, most airline companies are going bust. The ones that are in the business, did they identify such opportunities and prepare to harness them while it happens, if a company, maybe my competitors decide to fold up, do I have the capacity to scale up? Am I flexible? So you have to identify this kind of things, opportunities and risk in your business plan. 
So this is the first section, business details, which I mentioned. I deliberately skipped the executive summary because I told you it should be written last and it entails everything from business plan, summary of your product and services, market strategy, exit strategy, what all of them have to be discussed in the executive summary. And one key thing you should note in the executive summary is that it shouldn't be long, please. Executive summary at most, at most two to three page, but one would be the best, especially if your business is not that complex. A one page executive summary, which highlights everything. I don't expect you to prepare balance sheet in the executive summary or draw graphs in the executive summary. It's just a brief, that should be in the main body of the business plan. So it should be very, very short. And that's why I skipped it here. It should be the last thing we offer. So before we go into the business details, let's see. We still need to go back to study, study and study well. I'm going to send the slides to you, Esther. Actually, the idea of this is to stimulate your mind. It's to stimulate your mind so that you can actually go back to study, study and study well. I'm going to send the slides Sorry. to you, Esther. Actually, the time idea you? Of this is yes, sir. I can, I can see. Our you. time is fast spent. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Our time is fast, Spencer. Wow. We're out of time? Yes, sir. Yes, I sir. thought it was going about 30 minutes. No, it was 45 minutes. Really? Really? Yes, sir. Okay. The good thing is I've gone through the main parts of the... Yeah. Right, so it was, yeah. it was the financial plans that I wanted to discuss in layman time to people because that's where scared people a lot. People think I'm not an accountant, I'm not a financial expert, so I might not be able to do that. Actually, it's very key if you have an understanding of it. Okay, so I'll send okay, the slides. Sir. Um, okay, sir, you we are willing to give you 10 more minutes, sir. Okay, now that's very impressive. So I'm going to do that and yes, go sir. to just the technical areas. So thank you very much, okay, Andrew. Yeah, so well, guys, say thank you to Andrew. Yay, we are very happy. <laughs> okay. I hope my screen is still visible to you or do I need to do that again? Let me do that again. Okay. You can see my screen now, right? So I have 10 minutes, so I'm going to try to stick to that. So like I mentioned earlier, the business detail is self-explanatory. It just gives the details of your business. Now, the only area I want to ad address here is the legal form of your business. Now, you have to decide what do you want to know. Know the advantage and disadvantage of different business form. We have the sole proprietorship. Basically, you own the business. Nobody owns the business with you. We have a partnership where maybe you and some uh, friend own the business and your liability is equally shared. Now, sole proprietorship and partnership, one common feature, common feature of both of them is that their liability is not limited. Now, forget that technical term. What I mean is that if you borrow money from a bank as a sole proprietor or as a partnership business, the, if, if your business fails, the bank will come after your business, sell your business, and if the money is not enough, would ask you, okay, that car you bought, bring it, you have to pay my loan. Or the houses you have, you and your partner, bring it, I have to sell them to sell my loan. So that's what it means that the, lim the liability is not limited. It extends to you, your personal self. And that's one advantage of having a company or a corporation. In a corporation or a business, the liabilities are limited. So even as a business, I own the company but the company is a separate entity in itself. So even if I borrow money and the business goes bankrupt, the bank can only hold the business and the assets of the business liable, but not my personal assets. So, and each of them have their advantages and disadvantages and needs. So you can read further on them and see what you can do, or even go to 
what's the website for the company in Nigeria, uh, the regulator in Nigeria, CAC, Corporate Affairs Commission. They have a very good write-ups on advice on which kind of partnership will suit your business. So please try to visit there and read about it. Now, product and services, like I explained earlier, you need to explain this very clearly. What the product should be clear. Don't be vague. I am developing an app that will help coppers. The name of the app is this, and the idea is for it to create a broad overview. There is lack of information of housing or rental prices in each state coppers are sent to. And because they are new, they can't go around asking. And before, by the time they get a house, they're exploited. So this app will give an overview, collate all information in one, in, in your fingertip so that you can make informed decision. That's your idea, that's your market, that's your product, that's your service you're offering. So it has to be very, very clear to you and to the person you're presenting it to. So how will the client purchase it? You can also study some actually things you can develop yourself. Now, your marketing strategy and plan is very key. Are you going to be selling, for instance, to customers directly or you're going to be providing services to businesses directly, that's what is meant by B2B, business to business, or you're going to be selling to individuals directly, business to customers, that's B2C. So you have to define this very clearly. Your product, your price, your promotion. Promotion here especially is very key. Now, before, it used to be very difficult to promote products because advertising rates were very, very forbidding, very expensive. You, you'll be surprised to know how much it costs to take just three minutes in a radio advert, or maybe two, one minute on TV, or a whole page of a newspaper. It's very, very expensive. But now with the advent of social media, it's been liberalized. You might sit down, market your product for free, just post it on your Instagram, Facebook profile, try, that's why it's very good to have as much followers as possible so that your product or your services reach as much people as possible. And nowadays, there's the boosting services. It's very affordable. You might decide to boost your post to reach people who are outside your group. That is, for instance, you are advertising shoes that you are ordering from maybe one of these AliExpress or whatever you're doing, and you have your the advantage is that you're saving people the stress of waiting for delivery or the time lag it takes from order and getting to this country and you have them already stocked. So if you want to reach as much audience as beyond your followers, you can do that by boosting. It's called boosting. If you go to Instagram, Facebook, they have these opportunities of boosting. I think it costs its per number of people you want it to reach. If you want it to reach 1,000 people, outside your group, it might cost maybe 1,000 or 2,000 Naira, if you want it to reach 5,000, depending. So it's very, very affordable. So it's very key to understand what's your promotional plan. You have to define it here. Are you going to stick to social media advertising or are you going to go to mainstream media advertising? So this has to be properly defined. And also place your business, where is it located? It has to be clearly, is it an e-business or is it a physical business? Are you going to have stores selling these things or are you going to people chatting you up, sending you their requests and you um, supplying them? Each has its advantage. You have to weigh them. If you have a physical store, that's going to cost money. But if you are online, that saves you the cost of renting a shop. But then each has its advantage and disadvantage, so you can go through them. Because of time, I can't go through in details. Your key personnel, I discussed, this is very key. Get people you need. Be very, very open about it. Sorry, operation plan, one operation plan, I was ahead of myself. So here we are talking about the technology behind the product and service. So if it's an app, you have to be detailed, the software needed to develop the app. If it's an, it's a perfume, like I gave an example for the mixture, or if you are making soap, I know people who are very creative and entrepreneurial. They actually have a way of making things at home without even doing anything. Things that everyday people need. So if you are very good at that, just if you want to turn it into a business, in your plan, you have to clearly state how it's made, 
what is needed and the technology required, the product required. You need a lab, you need a boiler, you need a mixer, or you need an app, whatever you need, it has to be clearly stated here. And resources and investment needed. If it's going to be a physical lab, you need this, 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 it has to be clearly stated. So you have to be as detailed but brief, remember. It shouldn't be too detailed that it's going to make people lose interest in you. Okay? So then the next one is the key personnel. Oh, goodness me. Here you we have three minutes left. You have to define the people, their background. I've spoken extensively about this, their financial contribution. Are they bringing in money or are they bringing in expertise? And you have to be honest here. If you know you are into app development business and you are not an app developer, tell the person uh, in the business plan, if you already have it, the person in the team, clearly state, if you don't have, be honest about it and say you plan to employ or bring in somebody who has this expertise in future. So you have to state it clearly in your business plan. Now, here is the, where I want to be very... You, I want you to understand clearly the financial plan risk. Now, things you need to put here, I can't sugarcoat this. You need a balance sheet. You need profit and loss, and you need cash flow statement. These, th these three are keys. Now, in balance sheets, the only thing you need to understand in a balance sheet is total assets plus um, balance. Total asset is equal to total liabilities plus owner's equity. Now, I run a business which maybe let's say a tailoring business. I have a store, I have machines for sewing clothes and I have a car to do delivery. These are my assets and I have some cash in the bank that I use for that business. Those are assets. Let's say they are worth 10,000 Naira all. Now, liabilities and equities should add up to equal to that asset. Why? Because your liability is basically to get that machine, to get that car, to get those um, the shop you're using. Did you borrow money? Yes, I borrowed 5,000. That's good. That's my liability. Now, the other 5,000 that makes up your asset, remember our asset is worth 10,000. Where did you get it from? I brought that from my own savings. That's owner's equity. So, and that's a balance sheet basically. Total asset is equal to total liability plus owner's equity. That's the general idea of a balance sheet. If you understand this, you understand all the items in the balance sheet. If you go into details in the balance sheet, you get current asset, long-term asset, but those are not our concern for now. Just understand the main idea of a balance sheet. Now, the next thing is the cash flow statement. Now, remember I told you, pro uh, sorry, the income statement. Here, you have to itemize the first key thing in an income statement is revenue. Revenue is equal to sales. I sow clothes. After I sow clothes, I sell them. When I sell them, I make maybe 20,000 Naira in the course of a financial period. 20,000 Naira, that's your revenue. Now, that's not your profit, remember. You have to buy materials to sew that clothes. You have to pay tailors to sew that clothes. So you have to remove this cost of production from your sales or revenue, and that will give you your gross profits. Now, remember in this money, you borrowed it from the bank and you're paying interest monthly. You have to remove your financial cost, the interest you're paying to the bank, or maybe depreciation. Your assets, they won't be the same for 10 years. They depreciate. And if you don't provide for depreciation, you might not be able to replace them in future. You have to take this out of the sales. So at the end of the day, if you take out all this direct and indirect cost, you might arrive at the net profits. This is just an overview. There are other things you look, but just understand sales is very key revenue. That's the first thing in a profit and loss statement or income statement. Then you take out the cost to get your profit. Basically, that's it. Cash flow statement tells you the cash you have at hand in your business. So profit is not cash because you might sell the pro product we, uh, on credit. But you have to record it as sales because you've already sold it. But the money is not yet in your hand. So you might have declared profits in your income statement, but the cash is not in the bank. So that's the essence of the cash flow statement. Tells you the cash position of a business at a particular time. So you have to be very clear to understand the relationship between profit and cash. And then the last one is the break-even analysis. What you need to understand in break-even analysis is to understand, and that's what companies or investors are looking for. How would your business survive? That's where it breaks even, where basically your 
earnings is taking care of your expenses. Now, if it's more than your expenses, that's perfect and superb. But if it's equal to your expenses, well, that's good. We don't expect companies to make profit in the first year. And don't worry, it might even be less. People will still invest because I don't expect you to make profit even in the first year because you are just starting. You would foresee things that you didn't expect. So that's the essence of break-even analysis where you just give your earnings and give your expenses and tell you where it breaks even. Are you making more earnings? Are you making equal earnings to expenses? Or are you making lower? It doesn't matter in the first year. But make sure you have a plan to make sure your earnings always outgrow your expenses in future. That should be in your plan. So basically, these slides will be sent to you. And the last thing I want to tell you is just a quote from Harvard Business Review. What is the time to write a business review? When should you write your business review? Now, most people will not tell you this, but trust me, your business review should not be written now before when the, when the product or service is still in, the, it's still in your head, in the idea stage. According to the Harvard Business Review and Forbes magazine, most successful entrepreneurs were those that wrote their business plan six to 12 months after deciding to start a business. You've decided to start a business. Not just before you decide to start a business. You've decided. Maybe you've even started. Then you even you foresee some risks that you didn't anticipate had you not started. That's why I said, just do it. You might fail. And when you fail, you know that's a risk. In your business plan, you identify it as a risk and you prepare adequately for it. So start the business, understand the environment so that when you are discussing with investors, they understand that you know your market, basically. So due to time, I've had to rush everything. I've even exceeded the time given to me. I know Mr. Andrew might be waiting for me to. So I don't know, Mr. Andrew, do I still have time? Um, I'm amazing, out of time. amazing. Yeah, you're out of time, sir. Um, no problem. Uh, would, would ensure that we continue these conversations on your LinkedIn page. Uh, we ensure, we're going to ensure that we share um, links to your LinkedIn profile so that um, the students, the participants can engage with you on that platform. No problem, no problem. And I'm also going to send this slide to you so that you can share it with them as well. Okay, okay, great, sir, great, sir. Guys, 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 this has been exciting. I feel like I want to dance. I feel like I want to dance. Like <laughs> Guys, this has been amazing. Um, Musa Musa works with Total Nigeria PLC, and they are partner with us. They are partnering with us to give us to give you this much value, guys. His schedules are very tight, but he has made that time to be here to you know you know while he was teaching. I was writing down some questions I was going to ask while you were teaching, sir. I was writing some questions I was going to ask because I also run uh, a social enterprise. So I was writing some questions I was going to ask. And as I was writing, before I know it, you are answering the questions. And I'm like, who is this guy? <laughs> it has been awesome. It has been awesome. It has been awesome. Thank you very much for making it so um, simplistic, for making it easy for us to you know, begin to put it to work. I'm really excited to be the one moderating your session. <laughs> like I was telling my teammates, um, this is very personal for me because uh, you know, running a social enterprise, you have to have the resources to ensure that it, um, the impact is sustainable over time. Thank you very much for this. I know these guys are excited. Um, a lot of questions were asked while you were going on and you just made the work so easy for me you answered the question as, alongside um, presenting your slide thank you very much sir for the time that you have committed here so guys the slide the slide is going to be available on the telegram platform on the telegram platform and um the links to his social media platform he's very much um active on linkedin so if you're not yet on linkedin go and sign up for um, an account and ensure that all the questions that you have to ask you send it through you send it through also on our instagram page um ensure to tag total ng total ng as we we are going to upload a photo of um our facilitator she's he's going to sorry he's going to 
um, we're going to appreciate him on our page and we expect that you would um, say something amazing that you've taken from this session and also tag um, our official partner, Total Nigeria, Total NG, Total NG. Guys, what do you have to say to our facilitators? Come on, a standing ovation. Thank you, everyone. It was awesome having you, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Guys, 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 we are taking this party to Instagram now. Let's take it to Instagram. Let's take it to Instagram. Victoria, over to you. Okay. That will be bye-bye, right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Okay, guys, since we are still here, so I want you to ensure that you, uh, from all that you've taken from this session, you have something written, right? Have something written. This is the Sabi gang, right? Write something and share on the Instagram page. Ensure to tag us, Skill Factory Africa, Skill Factory Africa together. Ensure to tag us. Ensure to use the relevant hashtag Sabi gang, Sab Bootcamp. That's SA Bootcamp, and we are going to engage with you. If you have any questions, please um, channel it to the social media platform of our facilitator who has done so much in giving us so much value. Guys, we call it a day, and stay tuned for the next session. Very important. You know, he said that the next session is a build-up on what he has just delivered, right? So make sure that you stay tuned, and let us know what you learned on Instagram. Thank you very much and have an exciting time.